Hey everybody, welcome back. David Eon and the invasive Miss Lady Pop Hunter trying to steal my glory there by waving in front of my face. <laughs> and we are here with evidently a challenge. I guess we were nominated. We were tagged. Tagged by uh, Sticky Dan Goo. Dan Daniel over at Sticky Goose yeah. Comics. And the challenge is what? He, cha he challenges three people to show five books that are of some significance to them. And what, what's the qualifications? You got to pick out five books from your comic book collection. And what what do they have to be? It, it's it doesn't, five it doesn't books matter. out of your just comic book. Five books. So I can just grab five, five rags out of uh out of the just like the burn well, pile. Well, you know how some people are. They're gonna pick out the most expensive, <laughs> expensive. the one that mean most to them, oh. and all of that. Oh. So I pick out the one that means something to me because I don't have most expensive books. You got some expensive books. <laughs> um, so. So I picked out the ones that are most expensive. Okay. Not most expensive. It has significance to okay. me. Okay. What if you have more than five? I got more than five. Oh, books okay. So because I couldn't. We decide. do too much. Is that extra credit? No. Like oh, never mind. Well, so who wants to get started? You go first. Why do I gotta go first? Oh, we can go back and forth. I don't like back and forth. You don't want it? Oh. Well. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to go back and forth. All right, fine. Well, I'm going to start off with a couple of graded books. Okay. And this is New Mutants number 98, first appearance of Deadpool. And it's not that I'm that huge of a Deadpool fan. I like old Deadpool. I don't like modern Deadpool. I saw the first movie, and that was more than enough, and I'll never see it again. I thought it was terrible. I know a lot of people, oh, it's Deadpool. No. <laughs> not not me, but uh, the significance of this one is that this is a book I personally worked on that was a 7, 7. Oh, it's a 9.0, 7.0, oh, and I cleaned it, and I pressed it, I pressed it like five times, and that's a very, very high result for having worked on that, and you know, I do my own cleaning and pressing, and I usually do better anyways. I haven't gotten something back the same or less than, you know, like when you send it to a grading company to do <laughs> to do grading. This one got a big bump. As did, and I always liked this character. I know who that is. Do you? Because I got to hear it at least once a week. No, you don't. Beta Ray Bill. Yeah, Beta Ray Bill. Thor number 337, the first appearance of Beta Ray Bill. And I like Beta Ray Bill. And this is another one that I cleaned and pressed myself that was not a very promising grade that came back a 9.8. It was a mm. huge bump for, for this book, for the condition that it was in. And so, just like I said, a, a personal... Uh, um, you know, add a boy, I guess. Thank you so much for that. And I'm patting him on the back. Yeah, because no one all of you. Because no one else will. <laughs> but uh add a boy. Just a good testimony of, of my work that, you know, I guess I do know what I'm doing. I sure hope so. Cause I still clean and press. <laughs> now this one is a different story. It's another graded book. I actually like that book. It's a nice it's nice artwork. Yeah. And that is Green Arrow number one. Solid Copper Age title from 1988. Mm -hmm. And this is the book that brought me back into comics. And that's why this one is significant to me. Because even in a 9.8, it's not that significant. You know, people aren't going to pay a fortune for this book. It's not like ASM 300 here. But the, the story goes, once upon a time... I had you know, I used to do a lot of odd jobs, and one of them was taking out the trash for the Alston Congregational Church in Alston, Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. And the first three issues of this was laying on top of the trash one day. Mm. And, you know, this is way back in 1988. And I took them. I was like, I'll just, you know what, I'll take these and uh, check them out. Mm -hmm. And I read them, and I liked the story arc well enough 
that I went to a local comic store and found the uh, the next issues in line. And, you know, things picked up from there. You got into other titles, so on and so forth. But this is the book that brought me back to comics. Okay. Now, let's see. Now, this one... I don't know if this counts as a comic book. I suppose it could. Comic Magazine. And this is March 1984. And you can see that uh, he's letting you know what the date is in the snow there. Mm -hmm. Alfred E. Newman. And this particular issue was actually a gift from Johnny Future. Mm. He sent this to me with some other Mad Magazines. And this one is significant because I have very distinct memories of this particular issue. Because I bought it probably in March in, 19, in 1984 from a CVS drugstore. And I was playing hooky that day. Mm -hmm. And so I took this uh, to the park ringer park mm -hmm. and it was like below freezing it's like uh the temperature was in the teens mm -hmm. snow on the ground and yeah i would rather sit in the snow in freezing temperatures and read a mad magazine than go to school <laughs> because i hated it that much mm. i never liked school <laughs> <laughs> i know um that's already four, and I've got too many. Eh, it doesn't matter. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Laugh Comics, number 83, and I believe this is, oh, what was the year, 1956, mm -hmm. I want to say? Yeah, it is, it is code. I think this was 1956. I could be off, but... Essentially, it's my earliest Archie title, and it's in a really high grade, too, and it's hard to find pre-1960s Archies in a high grade. And I, I've always liked the old Archies, especially pre-60s. Oops, I bumped into the camera. Pre-60s editions Archies, and, you know, if I can find them in a high grade, I'll take them. And they're, they're tough to find cheap, too. These can get really expensive. But my earliest issue, I used to watch Archie when I was a kid. Filmation did several Archie uh, cartoons, Saturday morning cartoons, in the late 60s and early 70s. They kept those going. And we watched that. Mm -hmm. We watched the original one from Filmation. It's not bad, actually. It's kind of fun. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I collect the Archie action figures. I got the Marks and the Mattel ones from the 70s. Spidey Comics number one. And of course, this is the Electric Company edition. This is the Spider Man based on the Electric Company. First appearance of Easy Reader, who of course is, where is he on here? There he is, Morgan Freeman. Hmm. Morgan Freeman, because he was a regular on that show. And just like a lot of other like PBS early morning shows, the Electric Company was a staple. So you had the Electric Company, you had the original Sesame Street, pre-Elmo Sesame Street, as I'm always saying, because it was much better than modern incarnations. Uh, the, who was it, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, stuff like that. Loved those shows. And this just, it's very reminiscent of that time period. And then finally, this is Batman number 54 which is my earliest copy of Batman I used to have earlier ones but that you know that's that's another situation those are all gone unfortunately mm. but this is my earliest copy and this is from 1949 and this was a bin pick you remember that yeah we yeah. were at that show this was mm -hmm. a this was a bin pick and it was dirty and dingy, and it had some really terrible roll. I mean, it was almost an inch of the back of this book showing. It mm. was terrible. But I've got the, I've got it flattened out. I've got it cleaned up. It looks great. It's nice and bright. All that bright red coloring. 
I don't think it's a key specifically. I don't think this is a key book of any kind. But, again, pre-code Batman. I love it. This is a great issue. And I worked on it. So I got it cleaned up real nice and I got that roll. It's a little, it's like a 16th on the back there, but I don't want to press it again because of how old it is. But uh, it, it was like that much. It was awful. Mm -hmm. But it looks really great now. And I, I, I did more than five, uh, but we already established that. My turn? Sure. Okay, first. You could have gone first if you wanted. It didn't matter. Okay. So I'll start with the first ever comic book I bought. And read. Um, <laughs> this book, well, a few years back, mm -hmm. me and David was in Galactic Quest in Beaufort, Georgia, and the owner, Kyle, yes. um, recommended this book to me. I don't know why, because at that point, I wasn't in the comics. I had never read a comic. Mm -hmm. I had never bought a comic. But for some reason, he recommended this book, and he told me the premise. And I was like, okay, that sounds interesting. And I looked for it on Amazon, and um, it's four. It's four books. This is, I guess, an omnibus because it's four. Yeah. And I bought it, and it's called Judas, and, and it's the Judas of the twelve disciples. And the story picks up after he commits suicide, and he's in hell, and he's figuring out what happened, why did all of that go down, and why was he chosen to be the traitor. Mm -hmm. um, when you start reading it at first, and that kind of threw me off, but I kept I kept reading, and it's actually pretty good. It, at the end, he figures everything out. He's told why everything happened, and um, the animation and the um, the story style is reminiscent of Dante's Inferno. So if you ever saw that cartoon, um, the animation in the book, the anime. Version. Yeah. yeah, the animation in the book is similar to that. But yeah, this is the first comic I ever bought and read. And I bought it, like I said, maybe two, three years ago. Um, and then after that, I didn't buy any more. And then I started getting into comics like um, last year, last summer. Uh huh. Now, this comic, <laughs> I talked about this a lot, The Unknown Soldier. Yeah. And I saw the name and I was wondering, you know, who is that character? And I looked it up because I like the, um, the war books, mainly for the covers, but I do read them. And I was wondering, who is The Unknown Soldier? So I looked it up and it told a story, you know, it gave you an overview of who he is and how he became... You know, him and his brother joined the military. The brother died, and he was injured, but they didn't know who he was, so he's going to get revenge. And he got his own title, the Unknown Soldier, but yeah. he was in Star Spangled War for um, several issues. I can't remember how many, because I got almost all of that, and then some in his own title. And um, so I haven't started reading it yet, because I'm already reading on something else, but um, I'm looking forward to reading this story and just seeing who he is and and how he makes his way reconciling everything that happened to him. So that's a first appearance. Yeah, this is the yeah. first appearance right here. This is Star Spangled uh, War 151, and it's the first appearance of the Unknown Soldier. Mm -hmm. Now, this one is the Spectre. He's one of my, you know, I got a couple of favorite... Um, characters and the specter is one of them and this is the first one from the showcase um dc showcase the specter so that's why i picked this one up and like i said i got a lot because i'm a big fan of dead man i'm a big fan of um the phantom stranger but i just picked this one out mm -hmm. because um you know i i really like the specter okay oh now, this one is Batman number 78. And it's my oldest Batman. And if you've been watching for a while, you know I'm trying to collect as many, I'm not going to say all, as many Batman titles as I can get yeah. up to 1989. So, so far, this is the oldest one that I have. 
Pre- Will I get older pre- ones? Pre code, I think. Yeah. What is it, 1953? No, no, I think it was. Didn't you say it was? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the other one is 1948. Yeah, this, I think this is 53. Mm hmm. So, I'm going to try and get as many as I possibly can, you know, because the price. So, this is the oldest that I have so far in mm-hmm. Batman. Now, this one is Shock and Suspense. And um, it's the reprint. But yeah. I saw this, I think, on Comic Collector Geek. Yeah. He showed it. No, he didn't. He doesn't have this book. Somebody showed it. <laughs> Somebody showed it. And I was like, oh, my God, that's ridiculous. So I bought the um, reprint. And we've read the stories, three stories in the here. And they are all crazy stories. I mean, they, they, they sound like true stories. Yeah. Every one of them. And I think. They might be true stories, but boy, they are wild. Yeah, they are very wild stories. And this one right here is the guy, um, he's on drugs. He kills his father and all of that. So you, you find out his story, but this story is in there. And they have two other stories that are just as crazy. And you're like, man. But I, I really like, this is, um, this cover is one of my favorite covers. Mm-hmm. Now this is the oldest book that I have. Guilty. Period. Yeah, guilty. I like the crime and suspense books, the true crime books, the the EC horror books. Yeah. Um, these. So I uh, I found a guy on um, eBay had a bunch of these really cheap, and I got a few. So, but this is actually the oldest book in my collection. And I think it's not, didn't you say 1948? I think it's 48, yeah. Yeah, 1948. So, good. And I like the covers because they tell you a whole story on the cover. You look at the pictures, they got the word bubbles. And you can figure out a lot going on just by reading the cover. And I think that's what they were going for. To draw you in and make you want to buy the book. Is they tell you some stuff on the cover. Now you get a book. And it's just a picture of a person. And you're like. Now this one. I bought Green oh. Lantern. And this is the first John Stewart. Mm-hmm. And um, I watched the, the Justice League animation stuff. And it usually has John um John Stewart in there. Some of them have Hal, Hal um, Jordan. Hal Jordan. Yeah. Some of them have, have Hal Jordan, but some of them have um, John Stewart. But I like this cover. This is, you know, things, the cover has to draw me to get the book. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's just how it goes with me. I have to be drawn by the cover, or somebody has to tell me about the book, and the story has to be interesting. Or the premise has to be interesting for me to buy the book. And then this one, I love this book right here. This is <laughs> my crown book. My favorite book. I don't know where I saw this book. Somebody on YouTube showed it. And I just knew I had to have that book. I mean, just the way that it looks, everything on the cover said you got to have that book. And, you know, I looked up the price and I was like, no, you'll never have that book. <laughs> it's an expensive book. It is expensive. But I actually got it on bids on eBay. And I was the only one that bid. And <laughs> and the person started to bid low. And I guess they was hoping that it would go through the roof. Because others go through the roof. Yeah. But not, but not his for some whatever reason. Um, I mean, yeah, it's not perfect. You're not gonna get it graded and get a nine eight. You might, I don't know. But um, you're not, you're not getting in a high mid grade. But I own the book, and that's all that matters. <laughs> Cause a lot of people don't. Yeah. So you know, you can say what you want to say, but as long as you own it, yeah, you can say, well, I own it, and you don't. <laughs> <laughs> What is this, junior high? No. (laughs) Because, I mean, yeah, and and I do understand the importance of book quality. I do understand that. But for me, I'm so happy to have the book. Yeah. It don't matter. If I win the lottery, I probably would upgrade this book and get a a better, 
a better car. But I, but we went to a show recently, and a person had this book, and they wanted two thousand dollars. I'm not paying two thousand dollars for no comic book. It's just not gonna happen. <laughs> So, <laughs> I just couldn't, oh, you man. know, I'm still struggling that comic books cost over a hundred dollars. That's still a lot for me to take in. So, but, um, yeah, this is my absolute favorite book, uh -huh. um, that I, that I own. So every time somebody said do a challenge, you, you best believe you're going to see this one. <laughs> this one will always make an appearance. Oh, no. <laughs> and that's all the books that I have for okay. show. So now we got the name out, people. We oh. got a list. Yeah. We're supposed to name three, but I think we screwed that up, too. Yeah, we got like four. Oh, okay. Because I had to shove one other name just because... I want to see this guy, but he don't. He can show a hundred, and I'll sit there and look at everyone. But the uh -oh. first person is Johnny MIB Master Museum yeah, because okay. I I gave him the challenge of showing ten of his top toys in his collection. He can't went, do it. No, he showed a hundred, <laughs> and I watched those videos, and I'm like, and I sent them a message. I'm like, Johnny, why you got to do too much? You supposed to show ten. Yeah. So I'm just interested in seeing the well, one, how many comic books he's gonna show. And I know Vampirilla's gonna make an appearance because he loves yeah. Vampirilla. But um So that's M I B Master Museum. Yeah, and so we'll put the name check at the him bottom. Out. Yeah. Yeah. And then this is a new friend to the channel. Yeah, it's Shabu, are you? Yeah. Codename new Vero 2 And we would definitely write that name at the bottom. Yeah. Because it's a lot. So he has a channel also that's and it's codename new Vero 2 Yeah. So we're calling you out. Yes. Show us your books. <laughs> if you want to show five, show five. If you want to show 50, show 50. Yeah. We'll watch them all. Then Mark, the toy chic. Yes. Um, we you watch his, his unboxings yep. and stuff like that. And he has one where, you know, um, old and new books, which mm -hmm. is better. And then the person that I had to, to take David's word, shoehorn in. <laughs> Just because I like this, I like this um, person, and I know he doesn't have a YouTube channel, and he can come on this channel and show off his collection and do his tag through our channel. I just want to see his books, and that is Stephen Collector Six, and I know he has an Instagram, so yeah. I have to send him a message on Instagram. Yeah. Um, but I look at his books on Instagram, and sometime he'll go on Collector Geek channel and show his books. Um, but he's in that like uh, stuff you've never seen before club. Yeah, the, the serious like pre code and and Atomic Age, yeah, and Golden Age stuff. Yeah, yeah, he's just like so. I can just sit and just look. And he got a story for everything, and I can sit and listen. So those are our... We gave four people. Yeah, I know, because so we do are, too much. Yeah, well, you know, what can we say? Yeah. But we're grateful that we were chosen, and we throw it out to those people. And again, we'll put their names at the bottom, and we'll send them mm -hmm. messages telling them that we chose them. I choose you. We mm -hmm. named names. Yeah, we want you. Don't <laughs> we, worry, you're not getting drafted. We want you to show your top comic books in your collection. So, what do you think, guys? <laughs> do you like our books? Uh, what did you think was the most interesting? What caught your eye? Yeah. What stood out? Were you like, oh, that's really cool, or oh, I had that, or you know, mm -hmm. I have that now? Let us know what your thoughts are in the comments section down below. Please do give the video a thumbs up if you got something out of that. We hope you did. Share it if you can. Subscribe if you're new. You know how it goes. And if that's it, then what more can we say? But thanks for watching. And we will see you again soon. Yeah.